Jason is a, a researcher in CRIA, Centro em Rede de Investigação em Tecnologia. Great. Uh, so I'd like to begin uh, first by thanking the organizers of the Colégio de Estudos Globais, uh, Tiago Pires uh, Max, Miguel Bandeira Jerónimo e, e uh, Maria Paula uh, Menezes for the invitation to speak uh, here today and clearly uh, promises to be a very uh, stimulating uh, day. When I first received the invitation some weeks ago, I, I jumped with, with excitement uh, because I've been thinking, I mean for a variety of reasons. The first reason was uh, because I've been thinking of the value of religion for more than a decade now. Uh, I first began uh, thinking about religion uh, with some friends in India. Uh, friends who eventually set up uh, the, uh, a group called the Patna Collective. And the objective of the collective was to inquire uh, whether what secular <coughs> nationalists in India were saying about religious people or people of faith was in fact true. Were we really an, um, a, a, uh, um, a barrier to achieving peace and harmony that is available through, through secularism? Um, uh, could it be that religion and religious in fact fracture civil society and therefore need to be banned into the private sphere? In the course of the discussions I also got uh, uh, became familiar with the work of Tala Lassad and more particularly that of Sabah Mahmood and her work, uh, The Politics of Piety. Um, indeed, in fact, Sabah Mahmood's work uh, changed the way in which I understood the role Catholicism has to play in informing contemporary life and I'd, in, I'd like to dedicate this short presentation to the memory of Sabah Mahmood. I'd really like to write um, um, a eulogy to her uh, and I mean it's some time since she's passed away, but at some point I'll get down to that because her work has been um, so, so, so critical. And I'd just like to say that there is in fact I think a great scope for uh, a dialogue between Catholicism and Islam. But this dialogue doesn't necessarily need to happen on the on theological basis. It can happen at other quotidian um, uh, uh, experiences. I think that's where these kinds of dialogues actually are most uh, useful. Um, so my uh, doctoral work uh, examined the way in which uh, Catholicism as a social cultural identity was penalized by the Indian state in Goa. Uh, but for my postdoctoral work I wanted to look at the way in which Catholicism as a faith practice, so uh, distinguishing between an identity and something that we practice. Um, so Catholicism as a faith practice was dealing with Indian nationalism. Uh, in the course of this work, I was also motivated by a couple of larger questions. First was, is there or was there a, a distinct Catholic modernity, right, as different from uh, secular modernity? And secondly, uh, was there a way in which we could take theology seriously, but we being social scientists, could take um, the theology seriously? So a number of the ideas that I'm going to share here today emerge from this phase of my research and I should, I should caution that despite the passage of at least four years since I began my postdoctoral work, these are still ideas, uh, these are still works in progress, right? I hope Estete is not going to have access to this video and they think, what the hell? In four <laughs> years this guy has been using our money. Um, um, but I, I, so I'm basically using this uh, 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 location as a way to throw these ideas out and hopefully the discussion will help me sharpen the ideas that I present here. Now, when one talks about the problems of secularism in India, invariably the, 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 the object of study tends to be uh, the Muslim and fair enough, I mean uh, Indian secularism has battered the the, the, the Indian Muslims to a pulp, or the Muslims in India to a pulp, uh, but it has also had an impact on, on Christians, right? Um, and uh, notable Indian social scientists, especially those who consciously speak from the secular left, engage in a demonizing of both Islam and Christianity, even as it, and, and they elevate vernacular ideologies, uh, such as Hinduism or Hinduisms, as a model for post-colonial social uh, political organization. Both Islam and Christianity are presented as these uh, Semitic religions, religions of the book, 
which makes them uh, apparently uh, rigid <coughs> and um, unable to have a conversation with um, rigid, proselytizing, unable to have conversation with other non-Semitic traditions uh, of the subcontinent, which as a result of this binary that they've produced, these uh, non-Semitic vernacular traditions are seen as loving, uh, all-embracing, they impose no discipline on their followers. Indeed, as Nate Roberts points out in his book, To Be Cared For, which is a great study of Pentecostal Christianity in, uh, southern, uh, in, in the southern part of the, con of the subcontinent, all too often, secular liberal scholars argue that it is the imitation of Islam and Christianity by Hindu nationalists that has rendered Hinduism violent and aggressive, right? Um, um, yeah, furthermore, uh, for the reasons of the route through which uh, dominant Christian churches entered the subcontinent, Christianity is seen as embodying a Western and colonial epistemology, and for this reason incapable of being part of the resolution. Uh, um, uh, uh, towards a post-colonial uh, utopia. In other words, Islam, like Christianity, like Islam, Christianity is a part of the problem to be resolved by secular India, the route forward uh, for which lies in the reinterpretation of pre-colonial cultures by secular nationalists. So what I want to do here is to challenge these ideas, defending not just Christianity in general, but Catholicism in particular suggesting it has much to offer those who are looking to challenge the violences of the contemporary period, violences that emerged not merely from colonial expansion, but violences that were already present in pre-colonial society and were perhaps augmented by the presence of colonial powers. In other words, colonialism has something, uh, sorry, <laughs> in other words, Catholicism, uh, Catholicism has something, I don't, I don't want to uh, gain some kind of uh, Catholicism has something to offer as a challenge to the coloniality of power. Um, if I'm going too fast, just tell me to slow down. Yeah. Um, just, like, just raise a hand and I'll slow down. So my argument for uh, considering Catholicism as an epistemology of the South begins from my understanding of why we need an epistemology of the South in the first place. Uh, and at this point, I'd just like to make a slight detour. The one of the second reasons why I was delighted by the invitation is I'm always glad to come back to Serge. I began my encounter with Portugal with Serge, uh, and it's always uh, entirely, extremely stimulating. So that's another reason why I, I jumped at the invitation. So I'd like to recognize the, the work done by the group of scholars associated with Serge, as well as the, uh, the work of Boaventura. Uh, so the Santosh, which has uh, some of which has been extremely uh, uh, particularly useful to my thinking, if not in fact foundational sometimes. Um, so one of the reasons we need an epistemolo epistemologies of the South is the nature of the modern state, which suggests that uh, and, and uh, the liberal state is a particularly good uh, example. Uh, this state tends to cent wants, desires to, and effectively has centralized all kinds of power with it and demolishes all other institutions that articulate law, that art articulate common sense or law, right? Uh, additionally, the state, as illustrated in Santos' description of interlegality, is bound or twined with other social forms which claim, which in their turn claim to embody the only true knowledge, uh, what we know as science, right? So basically I'm talking about his idea of interlegality. The modern state, uh, Santos' idea of uh, interlegality, the modern state, therefore, is a form that seeks to occupy all locations of social power, law, and knowledge, and effectively suffocates other systems that may possibly pose a challenge to it. This, of course, as we already saw in our first uh, session, what we refer to as the uh, epistemic north. So it's not just uh, a, um, a geographical location. And therefore, we have a variety of souths that we, we can recognize. And I think, once again, uh, Santos already pointed out in our first session that Portugal is also a space from where we can draw, we can, we can, uh, 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 also a kind of a southern space, uh, though of course the north coexists with this uh, south simultaneously, as it does in most locations uh, across the globe. So,
from this understanding of uh, the nature of the modern state, we can see why Catholicism is often viewed with suspicion. Catholicism not only offers an entire institutional mechanism uh, in which to understand the, understand the world, organize, uh, organize uh, people into, into a society, but also it um, offers a radically <coughs> different notion of the world. So it's not just the imminent, but also the trans, uh, uh, tran uh, tran 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 transcendent. Transcendent, uh, uh, God. Um, right? So also, Catholicism is, refuses to be this thing that can be in, its, in the private space, but clearly says, no, no, we have something in, to offer the entire gamut of human existence. So this is, is a, uh, a particular reason why Catholicism um, has been uh, historically uh, challenged right from the time of the French Revolution, which is where a lot of secular liberal uh, uh, imagination begins to kind of uh, draw its legitimacy uh, from. Uh, now, one can say that with the, what I describe about Catholicism applies equally, equally to Islam. And I think that's my point. I mean, it strengthens my, uh, my argument. Because the argument I would make is that the kind of Islamophobia that we see in Europe and other parts of the northern world today, uh, and when I say no, uh, yeah, okay, let's, uh, uh, I, uh, part, actually have their root in a, uh, a Catholic, uh, uh, a persecution of the Catholic Church earlier. So the, the way it works is Islamophobia today, um, uh, anti-Semitism in the period between the wars, and prior to that you have an anti-Catholicism. Um, and uh, these are not by chance because these are all uh, uh, ideologies that offer another way in which we can structure um, structure society and in fact the other way in which we understand the, uh, the world. Uh, in this context I'd like to point to the work of uh, Ari Joskowitz uh, titled The Modernity of Others, Jewish Anti-Catholicism in Germany and France, uh, which he argues that anti-Semitism and anti-Catholicism were twin aspects of the secular liberal project of 19th century uh, Europe. Uh, and in fact he, what uh, Joskowitz also points out which I found very interesting is that for a number of these, of uh, post-enlightenment thinkers, Catholicism is in fact a Judaized form of Christianity, right? So, uh, and it is here that I, you, you, in my abstract I suggested, we shouldn't really club Christianity together, because within Christianities also there are certain ways in which some are seen as good Christianities, the Protestant versions, uh, and some are seen as bad. Uh, and the reasons why Catholicism is seen as bad, in fact, is something that we all rec uh, recognize as problematic today, is, is this attribution of Jewishness to, 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 uh, to Catholicism. So once again, we need to examine the way in which, in some way or the other, Protestant forms of understanding the world have come to structure secular liberal imaginations. Um, uh, Catholicism's ability to offer an epistemology for the South is also often ignored <coughs> because of its location in the geographic and epi epistemic South of Europe. That is to say, the prominent location it held within uh, the imperial formations of early modern uh, uh, Portugal and Spain. In his text, Between Prospero and Caliban, that for me has been foundational, uh, Santos observes, as regards colonial <coughs> discourses, the subalternity of Portuguese colonialism resides in the fact that since the 17th century, the history of colonialism has been written in English, not in Portuguese. As most of us would recognize, um, it's not just that history was written in English, it's that common sense was forged in English. right? Uh, and Portugal's subalternization on the European stage, and therefore the global stage, was not a, res a result of a conflict between Portugal and England alone, but it was also a way in which Protestantism was used as a way to <coughs> demonize Catholicism. So it's also the battle between Protestantism and, uh, and Catholicism and Protestantism uh, winning. And therefore, you have Protestant propaganda about Catholics that then come to be taken as scientific truths today. So it's so easy to talk about the Inquisition and um, 
um, and the way in which, for example, uh, Iberian uh, 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 empires uh, decimated um, uh, uh, populations in, in, in Central and, and uh, what is today uh, uh, Central and, and Southern America. Uh, and but what was I found really interesting in, in, in a workshop in the Villa Vigoni in, 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 in Italy last year, uh, a, a scholar from the uh, European Insti University Institute, um, uh, Lucy Vial, she pointed out that a good amount of the decimation of indigenous populations um, in uh, uh, Southern America happened, um, and she's speaking about uh, Argentina, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, happened in the course of the 19th century when there was this invitation to European populations to come and colonize the world. So the moment we have these other kinds of histories, we begin to rethink. Now, none of this is to justify the violence of, uh, of uh, the early modern period, but I think it's important for us to kind of also put it in context. Because I think these kinds of arguments about um, about early modern uh, violence are then subsequently used by contemporaries, have been used traditionally by anti-clerical uh, politicians in uh, in Southern Europe and in in in, uh, in Latin America as a way to justify their own processes of uh, either capture of power, capture of of property. And then as a result of this, these kinds of Protestant propagandas gain the status of, of scientific truth, which can then uh, continue to be used uh, the way in which we do. Uh, the result of this demonization of the Catholic uh, has serious implications for social theory, uh, namely the privileging of nationalist imaginaries over the universal. So today we are incapable of imagining the imperial as anything other than problematic or anti-democratic because it is in the context of nationalist assertions against imperial formations that contemporary social sciences have been formed. And I'm thinking particularly of the period from the Great War, right, in which all our disciplines, this is the period in which they are emerging, being consolidated. Uh, and uh, this is also a time where the uh, Austro-Habsburg Empire, the Ottoman Empire, are being uh, seriously attacked. But if we look at the, 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 the histories of these empires, at least before they take a nationalist turn, uh, these are moments where you have groups that today are minoritized within these locations, had a somewhat decent, uh, uh, a decent existence. In other words, it is possible for them to exist as enclosed communities and deal with their own laws and not necessarily be persecuted. For, for difference. Um, indeed, speaking from a Goan context, I would argue that the linking of Portuguese imperialism with Catholicism allowed for contemporary, allowed for Goans to be considered citizens of, of the empire. While earlier this was a, a possibility <coughs> available to elite Goans, today especially, all manner of, of Goans, subaltern or, other, uh, uh, or otherwise, are capable of asserting a Europeanness with an uncomplicated Europeanness and participate in, in the economies uh, of Europe. Something that is particularly useful to them because of the kind of uh, violence and, uh, and uh, violence that they face from the, uh, from the Indian state, right? Um, so I, I I'd also like to point out that Protestant forms of Christianity have worked well with nationalist and romantic, uh, romantic ideologies, given the manner in which they were born from, with which Protestantism was born from a spirit to Rome, which at the time was imagined as this imperious harlot, uh, as well as the way in which they fostered nationalist communities, and the way in which they worked very well uh, with, uh, with romantic ideologies. Right? But it is not only, uh, at this point in time, I just want to point out that when I use imperialism, uh, em, uh, empire as a concept, I'm particularly inspired by a recent work, work by Gary Wilders. I, I'm, 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 I wonder if I make a mistake with the first name, it's Gary, Gary Wilders, uh, who talks about, who, who, talk, who, who 
who talks about empire and the way in which um, uh, Senghor and uh, Cezaire uh, attempted to use, bring justice within the empire, and other persons who look at, who can make a distinction between imperialistic, which is problematic, which involves violence, and imperial, which is this kind of universal expansion <coughs> of everyone into, into the folds that we can, we can work together. Right? So, but it is not only because Catholicism is suspect by the powers of the North uh, and historically located in regions of the South <coughs> that it offers scope um, for an epistemology of the South. As uh, James Chappell um, indicates in Catholic Modern, in the interwar period, it was Catholic intellectuals who articulated the idea of a personalism, right? Where the human being is at the center of, of political theory. This, this idea that we today attribute to human rights uh, uh, discourse, the inviolable, inviolable dignity of the individual, uh, emerges through Catholic discourse, right? Um, so, thus far, I've suggested a variety of reasons for considering Catholicism as an epistemology of the South. These include the fact that it offers a polity that extends beyond the imminent, a, po a location that allows social organization outside of the modern state, can conceive of the uh, social in universal terms, and be uh, beyond the limited and increasingly problematic uh, conceptions of the national, and because of its commitment to the inviolable, inviolable dignity of the individual. <coughs> Um, this final aspect is important because all too often we'd like to elevate uh, uh, you know, these ideologies from, from pre-colonial, uh, uh, what we see at, uh, as the South, as offering solutions to a world. But let's look at South Asia. When you give <coughs> rights to non-humans, when you give rights to the cow, uh, that, cow, that cow is used as an object to kill human beings, uncomplicatedly, as we have seen in contemporary India. So I have my reservations, even though I come from this tradition where we, as, as someone who was interested in the uh, uh, ecology, the issues of ecology and, and law, uh, where we see, let's give rights to mountains and trees and rivers. I mean, I recognize the, its, its, uh, its uh, sexiness. But I think there are serious problems that the cow, uh, I think, uh, definitely, that the politics of the cow definitely point out, right? Additionally, while emphasizing the, the value of the individual, the importance of the individual, what the Catholicism also does is to stress the importance of the individual in community. So it's not just one or the other, it's, 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 it's both, right? And it's definitely not this autonomous individual which is the favorite subject of the Enlightenment. Now, none of this is to say that Catholicism as a practice or its history uh, as an institution is perfect, right? There have been, there will be, and there are huge problems. But I believe that Catholicism continues to offer more than it is faulted for. Uh, to continue to draw from Santos' idea of interlegality, I would suggest that the problems um, of, with Catholicism emerged when it it twined uh, problematically with patri uh, uh, patriarchy or with imperialism, right? And yet Catholicism's core values, or let's put it differently, the values that Jesus Christ offers, right, uh, systematically create a space for this coupling to be challenged. And I think uh, Santos already in that second part of his, uh, uh, when he was talking about the abyssal lines of religion, kind of offered, uh, suggested the, the possibility for this, right? Um, so I, 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 that's basically what I have to say and uh, thank you very much. Great, thank you.